Hi, I'm Flannery O'Rourke, an attorney at Virginia Poverty Law Center. Today I'm going to explain how to calculate your Virginia unemployment benefit amount. Keep in mind that there are lots of requirements for entitlement to unemployment benefits. So this presentation will help you identify what benefits you may be entitled to. This presentation is only for educational purposes and is not legal advice. Now, before we dive in, you may be asking, doesn't the Virginia Employment Commission tell me what benefits I will receive? Absolutely. The Virginia Employment Commission will send you a notice entitled Statement of Wages and Potential Benefit Entitlement. This document tells you your benefit amount and duration if you meet other criteria for unemployment benefits. Importantly, receiving this document does not guarantee that you are entitled to benefits. Now, when you receive this document, review it closely. It may include employers that you never worked for. It may not include wages that you earned during the covered period. In either case, notify the Virginia Employment Commission as soon as possible. So, at this point, you may be wondering if Virginia Employment Commission sends me a notice that tells me my weekly benefit amount and benefit duration, then why do I need to watch the rest of this lesson? Well, the rest of this lesson will explain how Virginia Employment Commission determines which earnings to look at to calculate your weekly benefit amount and duration. Many claimants are surprised to learn that the earnings that they made directly before becoming unemployed are not considered necessarily for calculating their weekly benefit amount or the duration of benefits. Thus, if you're interested in learning more, Let's keep going. So let's get started. First question is, how does Virginia determine my weekly unemployment benefit? Well, the answer is that Virginia calculates the weekly unemployment benefit based on the claimant's base period earnings or the claimant's alternate base period earnings. If you're thinking, what are base period earnings or alternate base period earnings? Don't worry, you're in the right place. We'll get to it soon. A second question is, how does Virginia determine how many weeks of benefits that I'm entitled to? Here again, Virginia is going to look at the claimant's base period earnings or the claimant's alternate base period earnings. A common misconception is that everyone is entitled to 26 weeks of benefits. Actually, if you're entitled to benefits, the number of weeks of coverage may be as few as 12 weeks, but not more than 26 weeks generally. So what is the base period? By default, the base period is the first four or the oldest four of the last five completed calendar quarters immediately preceding the claimant's benefit effective date. If you're thinking, what is the benefit effective date? Well, on notices that you receive from the Virginia Employment Commission, in the top right, it will have your benefit effective date. This is the first day of the first week that you filed for unemployment. This may be a different period of time than when you became unemployed, if you waited a little bit to file for unemployment. What is a calendar quarter? Well, each calendar year has four quarters. The first quarter is January to March, second quarter is April to June, third quarter is July to September, and the fourth quarter is October to December. For the base period to be used, the claimant must have earned a combined total, meaning you add together, of $3,000 in the two highest earning quarters in the base period. I know it's complicated, but we're gonna simplify it with an example pretty soon. And you can access Virginia's base period calculator via the link below. Okay, so we have some sort of idea of what the base period is. What's the alternate base period? If the claimant has earned insufficient wages in the base period, then the alternate base period is used. And remember, insufficient would mean the total combined earnings in the two highest quarters in that base period are less than $3,000. That's when we're going to look to the alternate base period. The alternate base period is the four most recent completed calendar quarters immediately before the claimant's benefit effective date. Okay. 
So this is going to take you through some steps to identifying the base period or the alternate base period. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because it's going to make more sense when we apply it to an example. So step one, we're going to identify the last five completed quarters before claimant's benefit effective date. And then we're going to look at the total earnings in the oldest four quarters, the first four of the last five. And those of you watching at home will know that's the base period. So looking at the base period, do the two quarters with the highest earnings have a total combined earning of at least $3,000? The answer is yes. Go ahead, you're going to use the base period to calculate your uh, weekly benefit amount and the number of weeks that you receive benefits. The answer is no, you're going to go and look at the alternate base period. And remember, that's the most recent completed uh, four quarters before the claimant's benefit effective date. Do the two quarters with the highest earnings in the alternate base period have a total combined earnings of at least $3,000? If yes, then the alternate base period is used. If no, then the claimant may not be uh, eligible for benefits. All right, let's look at an example. So this is Michael, our claimant, and he applies for benefits on March 26, 2023. And for the purposes of this exercise, we'll say that is his benefit effective date. So we are going to do step one, which is identify the last five completed quarters before the claimant's benefit effective date. And the base period, as you now well know, is the oldest four quarters or the first four quarters of the last five completed. So how are we gonna figure this out? The easiest way to do it is to use Virginia's base period calculator, which you can find the link there. And that tells us, okay, the base period for March 2023 is October of 2021 through September of 2022. So if you take a look at the table on the bottom, you will see that the first four of the last five completed quarters would be the fourth quarter of 2021, the first quarter of 2022, second quarter of 2022, and third quarter of 2022. You will note that Michael's benefit effective date is in March of 2023, which is the first quarter of 2023. And so when we are counting back the five completed quarters, it would not include the quarter that the benefit effective date is in because that quarter is not completed. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so let's proceed to step two. Looking at the base period, do the two quarters with the highest earnings have a total combined earnings of at least $3,000? So here again, shaded in blue are the four quarters that we are looking at, and then let's check out our earnings for those quarters. All right, fourth quarter 2021, earnings were $0. First quarter 2022, earnings were $2,000. Second quarter 2022, earnings were $0, and third quarter 2022, earnings were $1,000. Well, in this example, I made it really easy for us to figure out which two quarters have the highest earnings. And so I'll go ahead and circle them here. And 2,000 plus 1,000 equals 3,000, and we needed to find a minimum of 3,000. And so therefore the base period is used for determining the weekly benefits. All right, let's look at a different example. Okay, what if instead we see here the fourth quarter 2021 earnings are $0, first quarter 2022 earnings are $1,000, second quarter 2022 earnings are zero dollars and the third quarter 2022 earnings are one thousand dollars well we've got some math to do found our two highest again one thousand plus one thousand equals two thousand combined earnings is that more or less than three thousand or about the same nope less than three thousand so therefore we're going to proceed to step three the alternate base period. Now you're getting the hang of it. 
Okay, so we are proceeding to step three. We are considering the alternate base period. We remember that the alternate base period is looking at the four most recent completed quarters before claimant's benefit effective date, which in this example, Michael's benefit effective date was March 26, 2023. So do the two quarters with the highest earnings have total combined earnings of at least $3,000 in the alternate base period? Okay, here in orange is our alternate base period. So that's first quarter 2022, second quarter 2022, third quarter 2022, and fourth quarter 2022. Okay. And looking at our earnings, looks like first quarter 2022, $1,000, second quarter, $0, third quarter, $1,000, and fourth quarter, $2,000. So when we are looking for the two quarters that have the highest earnings, we have a couple of choices um, with the two quarters that have $1,000, but clearly the fourth quarter, $2,000 will be included. So let's go ahead and circle two highest quarters. And we did our math, 1,000 plus 2,000 equals combined earnings of 3,000. What was the minimum we needed to meet? Can't hear you, $3,000. All right, we are good. We're gonna use the alternate base period to determine the weekly benefit amount and the duration of benefits. So then once you've figured out whether you're using the base period or the alternate base period, how you figure out your weekly benefit amount. You're gonna look at benefit table division and there's a link to it here and this is just an image from it below and if we go to step two add up the two highest quarters from the base period or the alternate base period remember whichever one you found was the right one to use and find the amount in column A so let's say um, we see here 3,000 okay then the weekly benefit amount is in column B and so if your highest two quarter earnings total to 3,000, then the weekly benefit amount would be $60. And um, that's exactly what the example says here. So if Michael made a combined total of $3,000 in his two highest quarters, his weekly benefit amount would be $60. What about benefit duration? The last piece of the puzzle. Again, we're looking at the benefit table division C, which is down below. Add up the two highest quarters from the base period or alternate base period, remember whichever one we figured out was the right one to use, find the amount in column A, add up the total earnings across the base period or alternate base period, total earnings across the whole period. So if we think back to the base period or alternate base period, we're not thinking about just the two quarters, we're thinking about all four of the quarters, okay? Find the total earnings amount in the weeks column to the right of the corresponding cell in column A. The number of weeks column indicates how many weeks of benefits for which a claimant is eligible. So here's an example. So if Michael made a total of $3,000 across the base period or alternate base period, so across all four quarters, not just the two highest, he would be eligible for 12 weeks of benefit. So if he made $3,000 across all four quarters, then he would be eligible for 12 weeks of benefit. But you can see if, you know, in the, one of the examples, he had actually made $4,000 across all four quarters. You can see how it would go across and he would be eligible for 16 weeks of benefits. That's how you determine how many weeks of benefits for which you are eligible. And now you know how to figure out how many weeks you would be entitled for benefits and what your likely benefit amount would be if you meet all the other criteria to be entitled to benefits. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is available here. Thank you so much.